Chapter 56, March After spending a little time comforting each other, Dirk and Ava left the inn. Dirk adjusted a few things before he left, memorizing their positions. After that, he and Ava moved through the streets. They needed to find their other party members just in case anything happened to them too. However, there were already some guards investigating the area. Three people being killed in broad daylight, while not a shocking situation, wasn't a normal one. Naturally it had to be looked into. And while this wasn't a city, there was still a small police force that maintained some semblance of order. A few squads of guards wandered the town, asking people what happened. Dirk saw this and frowned, grabbing Ava's hand and pulling her along. He watched the guards and stayed away from them while making sure to keep an eye out. His AI tracked the guards' movements as well, helping him move stealthily. Luckily the town wasn't that big. Dirk quickly spotted Alec who was looking around with curiosity. Not long after Dirk spotted him, Alec also saw the duo who walked toward him. Dirk! Do you know what happened? There are guards everywhere. Yes. Some people were killed. Killed? Seriously? Alec was surprised, his eyebrows raising. From what he knew, any fighting and murdering happened inside the dungeon where corpses could be eaten by monsters, wiping away evidence. It was very rare for people to do so in the town since it would draw attention to them. Dirk nodded. Yes. Do you know where the other two are? Garrett and Kazma? I ran into them a little bit ago. They should be that way. Let's find them. Dirk spoke before turning in the direction he pointed. Alec followed, able to guess what he was worried about. Not long after, the three found the two lovebirds. However, they were speaking to a guard. Dirk cursed inwardly before stopping in an alleyway, holding Alec back from approaching them. Huh? What's wrong? Alec questioned as Dirk's hand blocked his path. Dirk thought for a second before sighing. I'll tell you later. Okay? Alec's face was weird as he just let it be. After waiting for a while, Garrett and Kazma finished their conversation with the guard. After the two separated, Dirk walked over to them. Alec. Hey, have you heard what happened? There was a murder. Garrett spotted the group and spoke to Alec. Since he was a bit awkward around Dirk, he wasn't very inclined to talk to him in such a friendly way. Alec smiled a bit. Yeah, I heard. What did the guard ask you about? Dirk stepped in, questioning Garrett. He wanted to know what the guards were looking for. If he were caught, then it was possible he and Ava might have to leave. Garrett answered. He was asking us if we had seen anything. I guess two people had killed three men on the far side of town. Did he say what those people looked like? Ah, uh, not really. I guess one of them was a girl. They also said that one was an earth mage since there were rock spikes and rock arrows around the place. That was about it. I see. Dirk pondered, thinking about the chances of anyone being able to point them out. Earth mages weren't exactly rare. And since he and Ava were young, they weren't likely to be suspected. Only if someone had seen them specifically would they be in trouble. But it didn't seem like anybody had. Dirk didn't let anything show on his face as he came to this conclusion. He nodded. All right. Thanks. Sure. Garrett was confused, but didn't mind it. Everyone was curious about a murder. Dirk was just a little more so. Eventually, Alec spoke up. Okay, I think we've had enough fun for today. Let's go get dinner and prepare for tomorrow. We'll be going into the dungeon bright and early. Ugh, I'm not sure if I want to. Garrett groaned as he was reminded of why they were there. Hearing him, Dirk's eye twitched. That night, the group went to a restaurant. Turns out, nobody particularly cared about a murder and the place was as busy as always. The only difference was the amount of weapons on display. While a murder wouldn't deter anybody, nobody would let down their guard. Humans were just as dangerous as monsters, if not more so. Even more surprising though was the lively atmosphere. Everyone was armed and on guard, but this only seemed to increase the feeling of safety. 
many people had fun without worry. After all, no one wanted to fight. They had enough to worry about in the dungeons. The next morning, Alec and his group members woke up early and geared up. They grabbed all their belongings and brought them downstairs to a table, taking inventory and double-checking to make sure they had everything. Once they were ready, they marched into the dungeon. They were immediately greeted with a wave of heat and dusty sand. This time though, they were more confident. They walked forward past the first haven, heading straight for the haven in the middle of the dungeon. They killed many dune worms along the way, collecting over a dozen earth mana crystals. All the crystals were tossed in the loot bag. As for other valuables like the worm teeth or blood, Dirk couldn't bother. The skinks were far more valuable, and he didn't want smelly items to stink up the loot bag. By nightfall, the group arrived at the Middle Haven. There were a few other groups there, most of them ones that had been here two days ago when Alec's group left the dungeon. It looked like it really wasn't uncommon to stay in a dungeon for long periods of time. The group set up camp for the night. However, they were all a bit nervous. It took a while for them to fall asleep. The next morning, everyone naturally woke up early, their nerves still getting to them. Today, they would have to make their way to the farthest haven. If it was just walking, they could make it by sunset easily. However, they would be fighting many skinks along the way. This took time, and every minute wasted on fighting skinks was another minute they would have to fight at night. Worse yet, they didn't have the stamina to move much quicker than walking pace. Dirk could jog his way there, but the others would collapse if they had to do that. Only Ava and maybe Alec could keep up. Garrett and Kasma weren't nearly as conditioned. Luckily, they had at least woken up early. By the time they were ready to go, the sun was barely risen. Dirk nodded, thinking how it would give them a bit more leeway. While everyone would be tired by the end, that was preferable to having to fight in the dark. They were quick to set off, the group of five exiting the haven and marching forward. They didn't look back, dead set on making it to the haven. They had to commit, otherwise they would turn back halfway. Screech! As they walked, fire skinks blocked their way. Dirk was armed with his bow and whenever he spotted one, he would shoot it. He coordinated with Ava as well, and she would rush over to finish the skinks he shot. Like this, enemies were made quick work of. This was only for the shallow area though. Once they went deeper, they encountered more resistance. At high noon, the group encountered groups of three. For these, Alec fought alongside Dirk and Ava. They would work to finish them as quick as possible. They couldn't spend too much time fighting or they would pay for it later. However, despite them moving quickly, Dirk didn't forget to harvest their target loot. He collected all the fire mana crystals, and due to his dexterous hands, he could pluck the crystals quickly. The loot bag slowly got fuller. Then, an hour after noon, they reached the halfway point. Dirk's AI kept track of the time and he realized that even though they had moved quickly, they would still have to fight in the dark. Luckily, they would only have to fight an hour after dark. That was only under the assumption they maintained the speed they were going at though. Dirk knew they would only face more battles, so the night would be long. Sure enough, they continued to encounter more skinks. As the temperature started to gradually drop, the group fought off groups of four skinks. Perhaps because she was feeling confident though, Kasma finally stepped up to fight with her water spells. Even if she had a hard time killing skinks, she could delay them until Dirk or Ava got to it to finish the job. Thankfully, this reduced the chances of anybody getting hurt. Dirk was mildly pleased, though he wondered where this fighting spirit was every other day prior. Finally, when the sun was setting, Dirk's group pushed farther in than they ever had. This is when they started seeing changes though. The number of skinks in each group actually got smaller. Normally one would be thankful for this, but Dirk wasn't. None of the group was happy about this. That was because the skinks only got stronger. Dirk was vigilant as he scanned the area around them. The group continued to walk at a brisk pace under the pink sky that turned the ground orange, all the while trying to keep their footsteps quiet. Dirk held his bow as his AI scanned for anything abnormal. Finally, he spotted a group. 
there were two skinks, but these weren't normal skinks. On all fours, they stood equal to Dirk's hip. Their bodies were several feet long. These skinks were massive, and Dirk could see their razor-sharp teeth whenever they opened their mouths. Their claws looked even more deadly. He frowned. After motioning for Ava to be ready, he drew back his bow. The skinks were about forty meters away, but because they were so big, Dirk didn't worry about missing. Whoosh! The arrow flew, sailing through the air with surprising silence. However, it apparently wasn't quiet enough. The skink's head snapped to it just before the arrow hit. Luckily, despite spotting it, the skink couldn't dodge. Unfortunately, the skink was tougher than Dirk thought. The arrow barely pierced the skink's hide. A small trickle of blood came out, and after a shake, the arrow fell off the skink. It was left with nothing more than a bad cut. Everyone saw this and had a bad feeling. Just this skink's durability was amazing. Those arrows were sharp, and Dirk had one-shot killed skinks with them before. But now, it could only piss the skink off. Alec felt a bit of fear as he saw the pair of skinks turn toward them. Alec! Take the left one! Dirk shouted before running out. These skinks were tough, obviously a level stronger than the ones they faced so far. However, he wasn't too worried about their toughness. Blades, especially his hatchet, would still hurt them. What he was worried about was their fire. If their bodies were stronger, it was likely that their fire was too. Ava didn't have the resistance to fire that Alec had, so Dirk sent him ahead. Alec heeded Dirk's command, running forward to his enemy despite his apprehension. If he couldn't face this skink, then he wouldn't ever have the courage to become stronger and face stronger enemies in the future. Dirk rushed ahead first, meeting the skink head-on. As he ran, he saw the skink's throat brighten. He continued running while his AI chimed in. Casting Rock Wall A magic circle appeared above his hand. At the same time, the skink opened its mouth. Fire bellowed out. Whoosh! The surroundings were made brighter as a huge wave of flame surged forth. Normal skinks could only soot a tongue of flame. This was a step above. It was the difference between a single circle spell and a two circle spell. Dirk was only just beginning to learn those. Dirk's pupils contracted as he cast the spell. A wall of stone shot out of the ground in front of him. He planted his back against the wall. Flames washed around its sides. Dirk looked at the wall of fire to his right and left, feeling the heat. Not only was there a lot of this fire, but it was a level hotter than normal skinks. Dirk would have to bring forth all his mana to defend his body if he wanted to tank that heat. Fortunately, the fire didn't last forever. Right when the fire dissipated, Dirk flew around the side. A rock pillar shot out under his foot, throwing him forward to his enemy. Screech! The skink screamed as it met its enemy head-on. Dirk equipped his spear as the two got close. The skink swiped out with its claws. Dirk planted his feet and thrust forth the spear. The blade pierced into the skink's thick arm, causing it to howl in pain. He ripped out the spear, thrusting again. However, the skink skirted backward, dodging the strike. Dirk was forced to press forward, continuously thrusting out to try and hit the skink. Meanwhile, Alec fought his own skink. He drew his sword and ran forward, but like Dirk, he was hit with a wave of flame. Alec was forced to use his mana in defense while launching his own flame. The two flames fought each other, Alec splitting the skinks in half and mitigating the flame that hit him. Still, it cost plenty of mana on his end, and he couldn't perform that very many times. After the flames went out, the two charged each other. Surprisingly, because his enemy was bigger, Alec was able to wield his sword better. He always had trouble with small enemies, but big ones were right up his alley. Alec slashed at the skink's claws with trained movements, finally able to put his skill on display. He was able to put the skink on the defense just as well as Dirk did. The two fought their skinks, going back and forth between offense and defense. The skinks would breathe fire whenever they wanted their enemies to back off momentarily. While Dirk had an easier time defending with his strong rock walls, 
Alec had to consume lots of mana directly resisting it. But their victory was assured. Dirk didn't take long to severely wound his skink, driving his spear into its throat. After that, a few more thrusts and it was dead. He then went to help Alec, killing it quickly with a two-pronged assault. When the second skink died, Dirk straightened his back. He thought inwardly. What's the time? Total battle time, 4 minutes, 12 seconds. Damn. Dirk frowned at the time. These skinks were fast and tough. It took longer to hurt them at all, more so to kill them. That combined with their fire made the battles longer. While it would normally be acceptable, they were on a clock. Even now Dirk could see the sun getting lower. If they encountered too many groups, they would be spending a long time in the dark. Unfortunately, there was no turning back. Dirk quickly went over to the skinks with his knife. Because their hides were tougher, he had to cut away at the skin for a while before being able to pluck the mana crystal. When he collected both of them, he glanced at their size. These crystals were a bit bigger and had a stronger mana content in them. These were obviously a higher grade than the others they collected, but Dirk wasn't sure by how much. After throwing them in the bag, the group got moving again. Unfortunately, they were soon stopped by another skink pair. This time, Dirk didn't bother shooting an arrow. He and Alec charged head-on for the skinks, diving into another fight. This time though, Ava also joined in. Dirk had held her back last time so she could see how the skinks fought. Now that she knew how strong their fire was and how long their reach was, she had confidence in being able to help out. She was right behind Alec as the two charged forward. When the skink charged its fire attack, Ava pulled Alec behind her. Water wall. She brought her hand up and cast a spell she had already prepared. Right when the fire tumbled toward them, a large wall of cold blue water was created. The fire crashed into it, rapidly burning away the wall and turning it into a fog. But the wall held out. Just as 70% of the wall was burned to a vapor, the fire stopped. The two resumed their charge, Alec thankful to not have to burn his own mana to defend. Under both their assaults, the skink was cornered. It quickly sustained wounds from Alec's sword, and when it got tired and unable to dodge, it was forced to take the brutal chops of Ava's axe. Once it lost one limb, the battle was basically sealed. Even its final breath of fire was unable to do much. Both of its enemies could independently block its fire. The skink let out a final cry, collapsing to the ground with blood pouring out of it. The dry ground was soaked with its blood. Screech! Right as Ava and Alec relaxed, they heard a horrible scream. They turned to Dirk who was fighting his own skink. Though, when they did their jaws dropped. Dirk was on top of his skink, riding it like a bull. In his hand was his hatchet that he'd buried in its body, using it as an anchor. His other hand held a knife that he continuously drove into the skink's eyes and throat. Under his ruthless attacks, Dirk's skink was quick to lose its life. It fell to the ground, and Dirk climbed off its back only after plucking its mana crystal. Once he plucked the second, he spoke to them. Let's keep moving. Right. Ava snapped out of it, continuing their march. Alec took a little longer though. He couldn't seem to get the image of Dirk riding the skink out of his mind. How did he even get there in the first place? Chapter 57, Injured The group used brute force to take out any skinks in their way. Dirk made sure to keep everyone moving as quickly as possible. They never even stopped for water breaks, forced to drink while walking. This saved them precious time though. Soon enough, they were only seven miles away. However, this was also when the sun sunk below the horizon. The skies rapidly darkened, Dirk's face darkening along with it. Two hours, it could be worse. Dirk shook his head. They would be spending at least two hours in the dark to cover the last of the distance. However, this last portion held larger groups of powerful skinks. It wasn't long before they encountered a group of three skinks that stood as tall as everyone's hips. Ava, Alec, and Dirk were forced to fight one each. Garrett and Kazma continued to stay out of the way, their fear growing. 
they saw the surroundings brighten whenever a skink would let out its fire breath, and they worried about it attracting more enemies. Unfortunately, their worries were spot on. While Dirk fought, he spotted movement in the corner of his eye. There was another group of two skinks, and they were sneaking up to them. Seeing this, he let out a long breath. Suddenly, his movements became sharper, quicker, and hits harder. At the same time, rock spikes and arrows were summoned, hitting the skink in its blind spot and throwing it off balance. Dirk took the myriad of openings to land lethal hits. The skink's life quickly faded away. Then, Dirk flipped around. Above him appeared eight rock arrows. They split into two groups of four and then shot out into the darkness. Garrett and Kazma saw this and were confused. It was only when they heard that familiar scream that they realized what was happening. Dirk charged, attacking the two new skinks with ruthless acuity. He continued summoning arrows to hit them from above as he stabbed and slashed at them with his spear. When one of the skinks tried to divert its attention to the others, he ripped out his hatchet and threw it, wounding the skink in the back. Like this, he managed to hold the attention of the two skinks, gradually wearing them down. He would block fire with walls and bombard them from all sides. Right as Ava and Alec killed their skinks, Dirk was finishing off his two. They turned to Dirk, seeing him drive his spear through the skink's eye socket. After piercing the brain, the skink dropped dead. Dirk then turned and threw his spear like a javelin, landing it in the second skink's neck that was farther away. The others were surprised by his intensity. Like that, the battle was finished. Dirk retrieved his weapons before plucking the mana crystals. He couldn't bother speaking to his group as he pulled everyone along. They continued to trudge as the surroundings turned black, only the faint moonlight above them slightly illuminating their surroundings. Luckily, even in the dark Dirk's eyes worked just as well. This was his superior genetic construction at play. He continued to scan around for any movements, making sure no skinks got the jump on them. Unfortunately, because it was dark, the skinks had become stealthy hunters. They waited in their holes, and when Dirk's group walked by, they attacked. They didn't even bother launching their fire, meaning Dirk couldn't detect the heat fluctuations. They were ambushed, but Ava and Alec were able to respond quickly to the group of three that popped out. Dirk handled one with the same efficiency, killing it as quickly as possible. However, he underestimated how devious the skinks could be. One skink peeked out of its hole a few meters away. It overlooked the group, seeing the fights as well as Garrett and Kazma who stood around. It focused on them, slowly making its way over to the sitting ducks. Stray enemy detected. Damn. Dirk suddenly received an alert. He often flipped his head around so the AI could scan the place, making sure there weren't any other groups coming over. However, he instead spotted a skink that was only a small distance away from the two stragglers. He couldn't make it in time. He could only shout. Kazma! Behind you! Dirk yelled, startling Kazma. She flipped around, only to see a skink lunge toward her. Ah! With a shrill scream, she jumped back. Garrett also saw this and was stunned. The skink dove at Kazma who stumbled backward, reaching out its claws. Slice. The claws met skin, tearing it open. Kazma was stunned as she felt a stinging sensation in her leg. She fell to the floor, cold blood quickly pouring down her leg. Ah. Ugh. Damn. Watch out. Garrett shouted, dropping all the bags and jumping on the skink. He threw out his leg. However, the skink was quick and dodged, scurrying away. Garrett stood in front of Kazma, unarmed and fearful of the large monster in front of it. Suddenly, he could see the skink's throat glow. It was going to scorch them. Out of the way! Luckily, there was a shout at that moment. Dirk came running over, a large rock floating above his head. Pillars surged out from beneath his feet, propelling him forward like a projectile. Garrett dropped himself to the floor, guarding the panicked Kazma. Right as he did, Dirk came flying over. His hands came down. From above, the rock that was a meter wide came plummeting downward. 
the skink saw this and tried to back away despite being in the middle of letting out its breath. Unfortunately, Dirk aimed too well, and the rock came crashing down on top of it. Screech! The skink screamed as the rock crushed its side, destroying one of its legs. It let out the fire that had gathered in its throat, burning everything in front of it. However, Dirk had already turned around. He re-engaged the enemy he was fighting previously, quickly brute forcing his way forward and driving his spear into the skink's throat. This came at the cost of a claw to his body, but he had his armor to protect him. The skink quickly died. After that, Dirk came rushing back, leaving the spear in the original skink. He drew his hatchet, bringing it down on the half-crushed skink by Garrett and Kazma. It broke straight through its skull, killing it instantly. With that, both enemies were dead. Ava and Alec continued to fight theirs, the battles almost ended. Dirk went over to help them, wanting to finish things as quickly as possible. Finally, the battles ended as Dirk helped Alec and Ava kill the skinks. After that, Dirk went rushing back to Kazma. He kneeled down next to her, looking at her leg. Alec and Ava also came over. Seeing as Kazma had gotten hurt, Alec brought up his hand. Here, some light. He summoned a ball of light, illuminating Kazma's injured body. However, Dirk was quick to grab Alec's hand, forcing him to the ground and forcefully snuffing out the light. Do not light us up. You remember what happened in the Gremlin dungeon. After getting a face full of dirt, Alec wanted to get angry. But he remained quiet after realizing his mistake. He cursed his stupidity and just sat at the side. Dirk went back to checking out Kazma's wounds. He frowned. The wounds were deep. Those claws were long and sharp. They had gouged out her flesh and dug into the muscle. There were three slices that traveled from her quad to her calf, each one pouring blood and almost an inch wide. Dirk doubted she would be able to use her leg, regardless if she could take the pain. She would also suffer from blood loss if not treated soon. Ava, come here and hold her leg. Ack! Kasma grimaced as Dirk suddenly picked her leg up, raising her foot to the sky. Ava nodded and held her leg there. Kasma continued to groan, but Dirk disregarded it. He wanted to avoid blood loss. After that, he went to one of the bags a few meters away. He pulled out a tent and the supplies to pitch it. Once he spotted a rope, he grabbed it and went back over. Without a word, he wrapped the rope around Kasma's thigh above the topmost wound. Then, he tightened it with a knot. Ah dash! Kasma let out a scream, but Dirk quickly put his hand over her mouth, forcefully quieting her. She shook her head, but Dirk didn't let up. Keep quiet, unless you want to attract more skinks. Kasma glared at Dirk, but hearing him she could grit her teeth and bear the pain. When she stopped resisting, he removed his hand, letting her breathe normally. Meanwhile, Garrett watched at the side, feeling anger rise up within him. Kasma was just wounded badly, and Dirk was treating her like garbage. He couldn't help but speak. Hey Dirk, I know we need to be quiet, but take it easy. She's hurt. Excuse me? Hearing Garrett, Dirk turned his head. His eyes were frosty, causing Garrett to remember just what Dirk was capable of. Garrett gritted his teeth. I said take it easy. You can treat her a bit better. I advise you to walk away. Right now. Dirk responded with a low tone, his words threatening. He felt his anger come dangerously close to erupting. However, Garrett didn't seem to sense the threat behind his words. He frowned. No. I hack. Suddenly, Garrett's words were stopped as a hand gripped his throat. Dirk's fingers clenched around Garrett's windpipe. He stood up, Garrett in hand. Listen to me, very closely. His face came close to Garrett's. I don't care what you want. From now on, we're going to keep this very simple. You're going to follow my every command. If you insist on defying orders, then I'll leave you and Kazma here where you can fend off those lizards by yourself. Otherwise, if you wish to heal her and keep yourselves alive, you'll do as I say and stay out of the way. Am I clear? Dirk's dark eyes glared into Garrett's. 
feeling Dirk's strength, he could only nod weakly as he struggled to even breathe. Good. Huh. Dirk dropped Garrett, causing him to inhale sharply. He coughed several times, his body trembling from both the weakness and fear overcoming him. Dirk turned and didn't look at Garrett again. Alec and Ava didn't interfere at all. Alec understood that Dirk was in the right. Ava obviously agreed with Dirk too. She was also feeling a bit of hate for Garrett. Although she knew he was merely a bad carrier, Garrett didn't do hardly anything at all on this expedition except complain, and now he was demanding Dirk to do things when he was only trying to help. This was basically biting the hand that fed you. If Dirk hadn't done anything, Ava was going to teach Garrett a lesson herself. Dirk went back to Kazma. Now, not even Kazma could look him in the eye. As he dressed her wounds, she didn't dare make a peep. It was only when he picked her up that she finally squealed in pain. The blood rushing back down her injured leg felt horrible. Luckily, because Dirk had tied off her leg, the wounds didn't bleed too much more. All right, we're changing plans. Garrett will support Kazma as we walk Alec, you're going to stick with them. Ava and I are going to walk ahead. We're going to maintain a large distance between ourselves. Ava and I will fight anything we see, and you trail behind. We should be able to avoid any more ambushes if you stay quiet and out of sight. If all goes well, we'll attract enemies and keep them away from you. Now let's go. Dirk spoke, and Ava took up a position by his side. Alec helped hoist Camps's arm around Garrett's shoulders. She winced as she took a step, but she could only bite down and push forward. With that, Alec stayed behind while Dirk and Ava moved forward. They separated by 100 meters, Alec barely able to see Dirk and Ava's figures. However, Dirk quickly lit a ball of fire above his palm. Like this, his body glowed a bit with an orange light. Alec nodded, able to more accurately follow. However, he was worried about Dirk acting as a beacon. That was Dirk's plan though. He would attract all the monsters to him, drawing attention away from the others. The reason he chose Ava as his partner was because she didn't use anything that would light up their surroundings while fighting. Alec often used fire to fight the skinks and that turned his battles into a light show. Dirk wanted to keep things less chaotic. He wanted to bring the monsters to him, but didn't want to attract the entire dungeon in the process. The two groups maintained their distance as they walked along. Alec frequently had to hurry Garrett and Kazma along as Dirk didn't slow down at all. While Garrett was angry about having to both carry bags and Kazma, he wasn't in the position to complain. He could also see Dirk's light get farther, and he didn't want to fall behind. Soon though, Alec put out his hand to stop them. In the distance, Dirk's light had gone out, and they could hear screeches. It was dark, so they could only make out black silhouettes. It was clearly a fierce battle though. And it truly was. Dirk and Ava faced off against a group of three skinks. Because they were the only visible prey, Dirk didn't have to worry about these skinks going anywhere else. He and Ava bounced between the skinks. She relied on her heavy axe and strong body to inflict serious damage with each chop. She got progressively better, able to control her movements more and develop a style of fighting. Dirk's skill was a given. He went between the skinks, constantly damaging them even if a little. He would move to one, and then suddenly turn to stab at another. If they were distracted, he would either hack them with his hatchet or impale them with his spear. And if they focused on him, that would lighten the pressure on Ava, allowing her to do more damage. Everything worked as he intended. Slowly, Dirk was figuring out that while monsters weren't intelligent like humans, they could be led along all the same. He could use their lack of intelligence to grasp their basic instincts, forming an optimal fighting pattern that ensured his victory. He would read their every reaction, and they wouldn't even realize they were being played within the palm of his hand. Such combat sense was what allowed Dirk to survive and become one of the most lethal fighters on the planet Earth. While combat sense could be gained through experience, only the best talents could develop their killer instincts to the highest degree. Dirk had spent most of the past 14 years of his life as a child that did nothing but train. His instincts had been worn down. 
But now, he could already feel it coming back. It filled him with a strange sense of euphoria. Splat! Dirk's hatchet fell down upon a skink's neck like an executioner. The neck was wide, so only half of it was chopped through. But that was enough. The skink collapsed without life. He moved on to the second skink while Ava finished the third. Soon, all three had been killed. Dirk and Ava stood in the darkness, their breathing strong but controlled. They suddenly looked at each other, and Ava smiled. For some reason, she felt great. Fighting with Dirk like this made her feel fuzzy on the inside. She chuckled a bit, though made sure to keep it quiet. Dirk saw that and couldn't help but smile himself. The next moment though, he frowned. He found himself enjoying dungeon diving and killing monsters, but he knew that on the outside, he already had enemies in the dark. He wanted to start a life where he could just do this all the time, but now that might not be possible. He felt anger at the one who wanted to cause trouble for him. He also had a bad feeling about everything. Eventually, Dirk shook his head. Right now, he had to focus on making it to the haven. After lighting a small ball of fire in his hand, he continued walking, Ava glued to his side. Alex saw the fire from afar and was relieved. He beckoned Garrett and Kazma. Like that, the group continuously made their way deeper and deeper. Dirk and Ava encountered several more groups, most of which ambushed them from fox holes. However, they were able to respond well. Ava felt her senses be heightened, and not only did her combat proficiency rise, but her magical ability progressed as well. Using spells while under stressful situations helped one learn how to better cast them. It would get to the point where she would merely have a thought, and the spell would appear. While that would only happen at higher tiers, everyone had to start somewhere. This was the best training. The group continued for a bit less than an hour. They only had another hour or so to go. However, at this time, Dirk heard a faint thud in the distance. Turning back, he saw that Kazma had collapsed. Chapter 58, Pain. Shit. Dirk cursed as he turned back, Ava quickly following him. Under the cover of darkness, he rushed to Kazma's side. Dirk disregarded the panicking Garrett as he began undressing her wounds, swiftly taking off the bandages. What he saw was alarming. Despite having tied off her leg, the bandages were soaked. Dirk threw out the bandages before looking at the wounds again. Don't tell me. Dirk felt a bit of concern as he observed the wounds. He suddenly spoke. Light. Make it dim. Oh, oh. Hearing this, Alex stumbled before bringing out his hand, forming a ball of faint light. With that, Dirk could see more clearly. He used his AI to scan the wounds. Scanning. Both the AI and Dirk looked at the wounds. Dirk was unsympathetic as he used his fingers to slightly spread the slices. This caused Kazma to squeal in pain. He disregarded her discomfort and observed the wounds around her thigh. The wounds continued to drip blood. This much would usually seem normal, but Dirk found it worrying. Sure enough, he didn't receive good news. Warning! Arterial rupture detected. The AI let out an alert as it highlighted a section of the wound, making Dirk's face turn grimmer. A broken artery was lethal, especially after they had traveled for a long time. No wonder the bandages were soaked. Dirk hadn't seen this before since they were trying to move quickly. His top priority was to keep moving lest more skinks converge on them, otherwise even Garrett would get hurt, and that would increase the chances of someone dying. But now the situation was bad. Dirk looked at Kazma, grabbing her wrist and feeling her pulse. Her heart rate was faster, but it was also weaker than normal. This meant she had lost a lot of blood. Alec. Dirk finally opened his mouth. Use all your healing power on her leg, right on the thigh. Do it now. All right. Alec was panicked as he dispelled the light and kneeled down next to Kazma. He placed his hands on her thigh, using his healing ability. Kazma's thigh glowed a bit, Alec's light element streaming into her. He concentrated it on the thigh as much as he could. And for the most part, it stopped the bleeding. 
some of the more shallow areas even scabbed over, beginning the healing process. He did this until he used all the energy he could. He stopped as a splitting headache overcame him. With that, Dirk looked back over the wounds. It looks alright, wait. On first glance, it looked like Alec had solved the problem. However, after Dirk summoned a fire for light, he could see a dark purple spread around the wound. This wasn't a normal bruise. Damn. Dirk cursed as he saw swelling. Suddenly, everyone saw him take out a knife, he put it up to the recently healed wound. Slice. Garrett was shocked as Dirk cut the wound back open. When this happened, blood came pouring out. Dirk confirmed his suspicions. The artery hadn't been healed by Alec. Kazma could only shudder under the pain he kept causing. Well, we're doing this the hard way. Ava. Yes. Ava rushed to Dirk's side. Hold down her arms. Don't let her move. Okay. Ava unsurely nodded her head. She moved to Kazma's head, grabbing her elbows and holding them against the floor. Both girls felt a foreboding feeling come over them. Good. Now, you. Dirk suddenly turned his gaze to Garrett. Garrett was startled as he met Dirk's apathetic eyes. If you do anything and try to stop me, just know that she may die. You're going to stand to the side and do nothing while I handle this. If I hear any demands or yelling, then I'll leave you both here. She'll die within the hour, and you'll die to the lizards. Am I understood? Garrett was shocked, but then gritted his teeth. He knew that Dirk was helping Kazma keep her life, but now his hate had gone beyond him treating her harshly. Garrett simply didn't want to listen to him at all. With this threat though, he could only nod his head despite how much he wanted to punch Dirk in the face. Seeing this nod, Dirk turned back around. No matter what, Garrett couldn't do anything to him. Everything from Kazma's to his own survival was up to him. If he could muster the self-control to keep his mouth shut, then they would get through this relatively fine. Dirk turned his attention back to Kazma. He took off his armor as well as his shirt. After putting the torso armor back on, Dirk took the shirt and used it as a rope to tie it around Kazma's mouth. This would act as a gag as well as something to bite down on. Then, after resting some of his weight on Kazma's uninjured leg, he took out his knife again. His hand came up to the blade, creating a ball of hot fire. This fire heated the blade until it was red hot, glowing obviously in the dark night. Everyone who was watching felt their hearts sink. They didn't want to believe their speculations. Ava, do not let her move. Keep her pinned. I don't care how much she struggles. Understood? Yes. Ava barely nodded as Dirk reiterated himself. Dirk then turned his gaze to Kazma who looked at him with fear in her eye. This'll hurt a bit, but it'll end quickly. With that, Dirk moved the knife. The red-hot blade approached the wound where blood continued to stream from. It touched. T-S-S-S. Arf. Kazma let out a guttural roar as her entire body jolted. The red-hot knife seared her flesh like it was meat on a skillet. Dirk was merciless as the knife pushed deep into the wound, truly searing all the flesh around it. Garrett watched this, his face horrified. He wanted to tackle Dirk, but barely held himself back. He just stood in place in shock, watching as he burned his girlfriend. Meanwhile, Ava used her strength to keep Kazma pinned. Dirk also put his free hand over Kazma's mouth, stifling the yells that the gag didn't muffle. Thankfully, the process didn't last long. Dirk removed the knife after several seconds. Taking a look at the wound, not only had the bleeding stopped, but there was no swelling. The artery had been sealed. Dirk let out a light breath before plunging the knife into the dirt to cool it. After that, he grabbed some more bandages and wrapped Kazma's leg again. He also untied the rope that was cutting off circulation. He didn't want to harm her entire leg. After the knife was removed, Kazma continued to groan, tears streaming from her eyes. That pain was truly horrible. She never even knew she could feel such pain. After tending to the wounds, Dirk untied Kazma's mouth before standing up and letting her be. 
there was no way he was moving Kazma right away. He could only let her rest a bit. He scanned around and stood guard. The group was silent for around an hour as they sat around. Kazma eventually quieted, the pain in her leg turning to a horrible ache. At that time though, Dirk spoke. We're not resting here. Prepare to keep moving. His words went into Kazma's ears like those of a devil. Garrett was also shocked. How could they move in this condition? You. We can't stay here. Not all skinks are asleep. We're sitting ducks if we get caught, and I might not be able to protect you in that case. We have a couple hours to the haven, after that we can rest. Hearing Dirk, Garrett couldn't refute. Kazma couldn't even stand by herself, let alone put up a fight. If a skink got to her and he couldn't do anything about it, then there was a high chance she would die. Even Alec was unable to fight for a while after exhausting his strength. Only Ava and Dirk could fight, and the part of the dungeon they were in had groups of four skinks. Let alone Kazma, even he might die if the situation took a wrong turn. He kept quiet. Seeing that, Dirk turned and bent down next to Kazma. He scooped up her torso, making her sit before standing her up. She shuddered as waves of pain flooded her leg alongside her blood flow. Alec, get up. Dirk spared nobody, calling on Alec as well. Alec had a headache, but his body was still full of energy. He had Alec take his spot under Kazma's arm, disregarding how much pain he was in. Alec could only grit his teeth and push through the headache. He couldn't exactly complain in front of Kazma. After Garrett supported Kazma's other arm, Dirk nodded and walked off. Ava was right next to him as they took up a position far away. Like this, the group continued moving as they had before. Now though, Alec and Garrett basically had to drag Kazma. With their strength though, such a thing was easy. They moved slower than Dirk thought, but trekked forward well. Dirk and Ava fought quite a few groups of skinks as they walked for two and a half hours. At that time, Dirk finally spotted a large fortress. Beckoning everyone over, they all hurried into the haven. Upon entering the building and finding an open space, Kazma was carefully laid down. After finally getting to rest, she cried a bit before quickly passing out. Everyone else was too tired to notice this besides Garrett. After unpacking blankets, Alec, Ava, and Garrett were quick to fall asleep as well, not bothering to pitch their tents. Dirk, on the other hand, went back to Kazma. As everyone was asleep, he placed a bag next to her body. He then woke her up with some cold water. Ah! W what? Kazma panicked as she was startled awake. When she saw Dirk though, she went quiet. After that, weakness came over her. Her body had lost a lot of blood, and she couldn't even lift a finger. Her fear of Dirk also compelled her to not resist. Sorry to wake you, but you can't sleep just yet. Eat this. Dirk sat next to her hand put out a piece of bread. Kasma was confused but didn't disobey him. She weakly accepted the bread nibbling on it for a while before finishing it. After that, Dirk kept handing her food, mostly dried meat. Meat had protein and nutrients that Kazma seriously needed in order to heal. He forced her to eat and drink water until she was completely full, only then allowing her to go back to sleep with the promise that she wouldn't be awakened again. With that, she passed out once more. Dirk also made himself a bed. However, he didn't go to sleep. Dirk had noticed, but they weren't the only group there. There was another group that had been roused from their sleep by Dirk's group's entrance. They had watched them before going back to their tents. However, with his group in the state it was in, Dirk wasn't about to expose a weakness. He sat alongside some of their bags, facing the other group's tents with a vigilant gaze. Dirk was especially wary after having been attacked in the town. While he knew that these people probably didn't pose any threat, he didn't want to take chances. He sat there for the entire night. During that time, he didn't just stalk the other group, but also practice his enchanting. He kept working on the rune he needed to form, gradually consuming his energy as he tried dozens of different formations. Several hours later, the sun began to rise. 
however, none of Dirk's group awakened. Dirk, on the other hand, had never gone to sleep. He watched as light gradually filled the haven. Finally, he saw the other group rouse from their sleep. They piled out of their tents one by one. Naturally, they were curious about the newcomers. When they glanced over though, they only met Dirk's blank gaze. While he didn't watch over them like a hawk, his blatant vigilance made things a bit awkward. The group eventually ignored him as they went on to cook some food. After an hour or so, they all wrapped up and put on their gear, preparing to leave and hunt. At this time, one of the men in the group split off and walked in Dirk's direction. Seeing this, Dirk stood up. Hey kid. The man who looked around 18 years old approached. Dirk just nodded. We're about to leave. We plan on leaving our items here since we're the only ones who come this far. I hope we come back to our things the way they were before. The man spoke with a threatening smile. Looking at him, Dirk could sense a very real combat ability from the man. However, he wasn't phased. He maintained his blank stare, just looking at the man as if he were some average, random person not worth paying attention to. I have no interest in your things. Dirk spoke plainly before sitting back down in his seat. Seeing this blatant disregard, the man felt a tinge of anger well up within him. He turned with a huff. Good. I hope for your sake that's true. With that snark, the man walked away, meeting with his group before walking out of the haven. The man was in a group of four, two men and two girls, and the other three glanced at Dirk before leaving. Dirk watched them leave. He truly wasn't interested in their things. They likely took their loot with them regardless of whether there were people or not. Either way, he wasn't one to steal things just because he could. After that, Dirk continued to practice his enchanting. Through the night, he had succeeded in creating another rune. This would make just about four runes out of the dozens he needed. It was also one of the easy ones, but he was making steady progress toward the harder ones. The gradual increase in skill would ensure that he could tackle the hard runes when he came to them. After a few hours though when the sun had already risen above the horizon, Dirk heard rustling near him. He turned to see Ava waking up. She pushed herself to a sitting position before taking a minute to remember where she was. Dirk? Right here. Oh. Good. Ava let out a breath when she found Dirk. All the previous events of the night came back to her at that time. She was silent as she recalled everything that happened. It was truly a bit shocking. If it weren't for Dirk's odd familiarity as to how to handle Kazma's wounds, she probably would have died. It was only now that Ava was realizing this oddity, but because this wasn't the first time Dirk had shown such skills, she didn't worry about it much. She was only thankful. How's Kazma? We should probably check her wounds. No, let her be. When she wakes up we'll check them. Dirk shook his head. Unfortunately, without the supplies of an actual hospital, there wasn't much they could do for Kazma. Dirk didn't have any cleaning supplies, splints, stitches, numbing agents, or anything else he would need to properly mend her wounds. The only thing he could let her do was rest and let her body recover some strength. That was the reason he fed her so much food the night before. Oh. Ava nodded to him. After rubbing her eyes, she moved over to the pile of bags that comprised his bed. When she saw that he had no blankets, she frowned. Aren't you cold? How'd you sleep last night? I didn't sleep. Huh. Ava turned to him in surprise. At all? I was keeping watch. There was another group here. So? How could you not sleep? Relax. Since you're up, I can sleep now. Dirk sighed as he shifted, laying flat and using the bags he was leaning against as a pillow. Once he was comfortable, he closed his eyes with his head facing the ceiling. Ava watched him as his breathing became shallow and his face relaxed. Thinking for a second, she got up and grabbed a blanket, laying it over him. He was still only in his armor. After that, she sat next to him, watching his face. She subconsciously combed her fingers through his brown, wavy hair, straightening it out. 
Dirk never let his hair get so long that he could put it into a ponytail, but he still maintained some length. To Dirk, perhaps this long hair was a symbol of defiance. He always had to keep his hair short on earth, but with his newfound freedom, he could let it get as long as he wanted. Chapter 59 Safe After a mere four hours, Dirk began to wake up. By now, it was already a bit past noon. Turning his head, Dirk found that the rest of his group had unpacked and were lazing around, enjoying a day of recovery. Last night, while Kazma was the only one hurt, the rest had been mentally exhausted. Dirk took a few seconds for his body to adjust before standing. The rest of the group saw him. Ava and Alec were glad to see him wake. Garrett and Kazma though were not. The first thing Dirk did was walk over to Kazma. She was laying against a pile of bags, and when Dirk approached, she shrunk back into them. Garrett frowned as Dirk knelt down next to her. Have you taken them off? And no. All right. Let me see it. Kazma was nervous as she let Dirk do as he wanted. Dirk lifted her leg a bit and unwrapped the bandages. There was a bit of red, but thankfully not much. Kazma winced as her wounds were exposed to the fresh air. Her heart rate sped up as Dirk took a close look at the wounds. He was silent as he seriously examined them. The wounds were still open, and unless they got stitched up soon, she would be left with horrible scars. As it was, they would leave behind bad scars anyway. Dirk checked to see if there were any signs of infection. After seeing how clear the wounds were though, he was surprised. It was as if they had been cleaned out perfectly. The only thing that could have done this was Alex healing since they didn't have any medical cleansers. Dirk was pleased by this. It would make his job easier. After seeing that the wounds were as good as they were going to get, Dirk put up his hand and planted it on Kazma's forehead. She looked at him oddly as he felt her temperature. Are you feeling sick? Dirk asked. Hearing him, Kazma was a bit surprised before nodding timidly. Why yes. You have a fever, and a headache I'm sure. Your wounds are clean, so there's no risk of infection. But bacteria still got into your system, and your body is tired from healing itself. You'll feel bad for the next couple days until your body fights the sickness. We still need to get you to a doctor though. Alec. Yes? Hearing his name be called, Alec responded. Dirk waved him over. Use your healing power on her, as much as you can. After that, we need to pack up. We're heading out in an hour. Heading out? Shouldn't we rest? Alec couldn't help but ask. Despite so many things going on, Dirk kept them moving. He wasn't even letting Kazma rest for a day. Dirk shook his head. Kazma needs to get to a doctor as fast as possible. Her life isn't in danger, but her wounds need mending, and she's only going to get sicker tomorrow. We need to move before she can't. The sooner we get her out of here, the better. Plus, I'm sure she probably doesn't want hideous scars on her leg for the rest of her life. Dirk explained, throwing in one last incentive to keep moving. Hearing him, Kazma frowned. She really didn't want hideous scars. She was supposed to be an elegant mage, but she couldn't do that if she had scars running down her entire leg. Heal her, and start packing. We leave in an hour. After Alec didn't say anything, Dirk reiterated himself. Alec only nodded before moving over to Kazma. After he was done, Dirk wrapped her leg back up before beginning to pack. By the end of the hour, the group was packed and ready to go. Alec's job was supporting Kazma, while Garrett took up his position as a bag carrier. With that, the group left the haven, stepping out into the blazing sun. As they walked, Dirk and Ava were responsible for holding off the groups of skinks they encountered. If any got past them, it was up to Alec to muster up his physical strength and hold them off. Throughout the walk, Dirk constantly had Alec use his healing power on Kazma. Because of this, Alec constantly had a horrible headache, but Dirk still forced him to fight occasionally. This was a form of training, and Dirk didn't mind being harsh on Alec. Like this, several hours passed. The sun eventually set, shrouding the desert in darkness and cold winds. 
the group continued to march in this darkness, but unlike last time, they had it easy. It only took a few hours to get out of the danger zone where the skinks had high strengths and numbers. After that, Dirk and Ava merely had to fight stray skinks that couldn't even scratch them. These skinks were only half the size of the big ones near the furthest haven, so naturally they went down quicker. Ava was surprised about how easy they were to kill, but she knew this was because she had been fighting the hard ones. Her skill had increased significantly. By midnight, the group finally made it to the central haven. It was here that Dirk let them pitch tents and sleep. Come morning though, he had them set off even earlier. By now, his words had proven correct. Kasma had gotten even sicker. She would sweat even in the cold, and her entire body was weak. Alec felt bad and did his best to support her. Dirk was entirely unsympathetic though as he forced them to keep moving. At the end of the second day, they thankfully made it back to the first haven near the entrance. Dirk didn't let them stop though, and they pushed through to the exit. By the time they passed through the dungeon entrance, it was already late at night. We're taking her to the doctor. Dirk spoke as they emerged into the town. The dungeon association had a hospital next to it, so he went straight for that. In this town where most of the inhabitants were dungeon divers, it was impossible that there wouldn't be doctors capable of healing. Sure enough, one of the few buildings with a light still on was the hospital. Dirk's group walked into it, immediately seeing rows of beds, half of which were occupied by injured warriors or mages. Yes? Can I help you? A doctor was quick to spot Dirk, calmly walking over. This doctor was a buff man wearing a brown apron, on which were plenty of bloodstains. Dirk pointed to Kazma who was being carried by Alec. She was scratched by a skink and doesn't train anima. Well, that tells me everything I need to know. Come. Hearing Dirk, the doctor immediately understood what happened. He waved them over, guiding Kazma to a bed where she was laid down. The doctor saw her feeble appearance and bandages on her leg. He skillfully unwrapped her leg, taking a look at the wounds. H.M. The doctor's face was neutral as he looked over the wounds. There were four slices that went from Kazma's upper quad to her calf, tearing through her flesh. The deepest wound was a couple inches deep. It was here that the doctor focused. Right here, this should have struck a vein. Who cauterized it? Upon seeing Dirk's handiwork, the doctor asked. I did. You? The doctor turned to Dirk, a bit of surprise on his face. He nodded approvingly. Well, good job kid. You saved her life. Without sealing that vein, she would have died of blood loss. Good job cutting off her circulation too. I can see those rope burns above the wounds. Whoever taught you this stuff did their job well. The doctor praised as he continued examining the wounds. Hearing him, Kazma and the others were surprised. When Dirk had seared Kazma's wound, he hadn't explained exactly what he was doing. He had only explained that he needed to do what he did or she would die. At the time, Garrett didn't believe him, but perhaps because of Dirk's direct confidence, he was able to keep himself in check. Dirk had shown skill and knowledge, so at the very least, he knew Dirk wasn't trying to kill her. Even Alec had been skeptical. But hearing it from a doctor, they were enlightened. The academy didn't teach them everything, but basic biology they did. Especially as it pertained to wounds from dungeon diving. There were major arteries that would cause the person pour out blood like a fountain if struck. If these wounds weren't handled quickly, these people would die of blood loss. Thankfully, Dirk had known what he was doing and acted quickly. Without him, Kazma wouldn't have survived the night. It was only now that the group understood this. All right, with you having sealed everything, and with the help of whoever is the healer in your group, I only need to stitch her up. Services don't come free though. If you want her to be numb during the stitching, then this'll cost about 30 gold. If you can't pay that, then it's 4 gold. 30 gold. The group frowned. 30 gold was a lot. It was clear that the majority of the cost came from the numbing agent. On this trip, the group had already spent a lot. By now, they weren't sure they would break even on the costs after they got paid for the job. 
that was even if they could complete the job now. Regardless, this was yet another significant expenditure. The bigger problem was though, they didn't have much gold on them. Sure they were all nobles from Golden Spoon households where 30 gold wasn't much better than a silver coin, but Alec had only brought a small stash of money with him. On top of all the other expenses, they didn't have much left. When he grabbed his bag, he frowned. I have 20 gold. Hearing this, the others felt their heart drop. Without 30, Kazma would have to get stitched up without the numbing agent. The doctor also heard this, but he wasn't so anxious. If you guys can't scrounge up the money, then I recommend putting some of it toward alcohol. If you get her drunk, the pain will be much less. Most of the dungeon divers here do that instead of paying everything. Drunk? Kazma gawked, as did the others. This idea seemed ridiculous, but on second thought it wasn't. It truly would work, only Kazma would have to pay the price of a hangover the next day. That on top of her already weak and sick body would put her through a lot of extra pain. No matter how this went, she would suffer greatly. After thinking for a while, Alec was about to agree and go grab some alcohol from one of the taverns nearby. However, at that moment, Dirk rummaged through the bags Garrett was carrying. After a few seconds, he pulled out a large sack. Clank. He dropped the bag on a nearby table. It hit the table with a hard sound. There are a bit under 100 mana crystals in there. That should cover the rest of the cost. Oh? The doctor's eyebrow raised before he opened the bag. Inside he found earth mana crystals and fire mana crystals. The earth mana crystals were only grade 2, and they had come from the dune worms. The fire mana crystals were a grade higher and came from the skinks. The doctor seemed familiar with this mode of payment as he rapidly calculated how much the bag was worth. He soon spoke. This bag should cover about 23 gold. Give me 7 gold and the cost is covered. Done. Dirk readily agreed, grabbing 7 gold from Alec's bag and handing it to the doctor. He nodded as he transferred the loot to another bag and pocketed the gold. At the same time, Kazma was looking at Dirk with a conflicted face. He so easily gave away all their loot just to pay for her treatment. This image of him contrasted with his seemingly heartless treatment of her in the dungeon. I'll get working then. I'll have to ask you to leave in the meantime. In about an hour, you can come back. With that, the doctor waved them out before mending Kazma's wounds. The group walked back into the cold night air, their moods downcast. The group was silent as they stood outside for a while. At this point, Garrett couldn't find it in him to say anything. He couldn't even lift his head to say thanks to Dirk. He had saved Kasma's life and gave away their loot to get her healed. Garrett owed more to Dirk than he could ever pay in a short amount of time. But perhaps due to his pride, he couldn't so much as say a word. His inner turmoil was great. Of course, Dirk didn't know nor care about Garrett's inner conflict. He took a deep breath after stepping outside feeling the nice night breeze on his face. It had been a bit stressful getting Kazma back outside the dungeon, but he had gotten her out safe and sound. He was rather proud of himself. As for the loot being spent all in one go, he didn't particularly mind. Regardless of how they performed, this was a learning experience. It wasn't as if their livelihoods depended on their success. Despite the downcast mood, Dirk actually found himself smiling a bit. In the face of danger, he had saved a life and gotten everyone to safety. Dirk had done this very few times in his past life. He was always alone, and even when people were dying in front of him, his focus was turned elsewhere, always prioritizing the mission. There were seldom opportunities to get someone to safety after they were mortally wounded. But now, he had actually prioritized someone's life over their mission. He had taken charge in a group, tactfully leading them out of a danger zone. Despite Dirk's dislike for Garrett and Kazma, he had still done a good thing of his own volition. It was a nice feeling. HMHM. Dirk hummed as he moved his shoulder, bumping it against Ava's. She turned to him confused before seeing his smiling face. Seeing his happiness, Ava's previously blue mood was brightened. She nudged back with her own shoulder, a bright smile plastered across her face. 
He, you did a good job. I'm proud of you. Ava was joyful as she wrapped her arm around Dirk's. She realized that he was happy to have saved a life. While things had gone wrong, it was Dirk who made sure that the situation never devolved beyond redemption. Kasma and even Garrett could have both died if Dirk hadn't been there. While he was usually very nonchalant about such things, seeing him happy like this was not only rare, but exciting. There were very few times where he found himself happy over an accomplishment. Not only that, but he even wanted her approval. Ava was more than willing to give that to him. Dirk smiled a bit more hearing Ava's praise, deciding to accept her compliment. He also enjoyed their little intimacy. After they made up and had a run-in with some robbers, they seemed to be getting even closer. Seeing their bright mood, Alex's mood also loosened up a bit. No matter what, they were all safe now, and Kazma wasn't in danger. This was something to celebrate over if anything. Garrett, on the other hand, wasn't happy seeing those two lovebirds getting cozy. He just stuck to the side though. If he ruined either of their moods by saying something, he might just get beaten up. He still remembered just how scary Dirk could be. No matter how angry Garrett was, he wasn't willing to face that monster. So, what should we do now? Eventually, Alec asked them as they stuck around the hospital building. He really didn't know where to go from here. Hearing this question, Dirk thought for a second. Well, we still have a job to complete. If we move quickly, we could make the 20-day deadline. It's been almost two weeks, so we have at most a week to finish. I don't think we can finish in that time. Alec shook his head as he thought about it. They had only collected the loot they did after two weeks of constant hunting. Now with Kazma's situation, there was no way they could just move forward like nothing happened. At this time, Garrett spoke up with a dull voice. I need to get Kazma back to the academy. She'll need more healing after this, and her parents will want to see her. Hmm. Hearing him, Alec frowned. If Garrett were to leave, then they would be down a porter. Nobody would be there to carry their bags, and it would hinder their fighting ability. However, when Dirk heard Garrett, he suddenly had an idea. Hey Alec, how about you take Garrett and Kazma back? Huh? Upon hearing Dirk's suggestion, Alec was surprised. Dirk continued. You guys take the luggage back. Ava and I will keep a few necessities and continue ourselves. We should be able to complete the job within the week, and then we'll head back. Alec was silent as he pondered. He wasn't stupid. He realized that Dirk wanted to work alone or at least without the weak links. Ava was the only one who could keep up with him, and they were also close. If it were just them, they could move fast and efficiently. Even Garrett understood that they were only holding back Dirk. Alec wanted to complete the mission, seeing it through. At the same time though, everything that happened over the past several days had taken its toll on him. He wanted to go back to the academy and catch up on some classes while he recuperated. He had learned a lot on this trip. If he had to do things again, there would be many fewer mistakes. From watching Dirk, he also understood what he was lacking as a leader. He lacked the same decisiveness and ruthless decision-making. Alec got scared every time he thought about how Kazma would have died if it were just him. It was only his first dive, and a fellow classmate would have lost their life under his watch. He couldn't imagine having to not only report this, but confront their parents. It was a dreadful situation that he never wanted to face. At the same time, Alec understood how valuable competent partners were. Someone who could handle themselves and contribute to the group was apparently rare. He was understanding that bringing on weak people was asking for trouble. Alec knew that he was someone at the highest levels of his class. He had to start finding similar people and working with them. Dirk and Ava were the perfect people, but for now, he had a bit of catching up to do. Thinking of all this, Alec nodded at Dirk. That night, after Kazma was stitched up and released, the group made plans to return. Only Dirk and Ava would remain, and they packed two small bags worth of items. The rest went back with the group, Alec promising that their items would go back to their residences. Chapter 60, Partner The morning of the next day, Alec, Garrett, 
and Kasma boarded a wagon owned by a merchant. Their destination was the capital city where the academy was located. You two stay safe. I know I'm not there yet, but I hope I'll be able to take a job with you two again in the future. Alex shook Dirk and Ava's hands with a vow. Dirk and Ava were Alex's goal. He wanted to reach and stay at their level. He would need more experience, but that would come with time. Regardless, these two people were worth knowing. Alec definitely couldn't be a stranger to them. The three gave their goodbyes. After that, Dirk and Ava watched as their group members drove away. Now, it was just them. So, when do we get started? Ava asked as she glanced at Dirk. Just the two of them. It made her a bit excited. They had taken very few things from the luggage. For both of them, there was a single tent and blanket, two water bags, the loot bag, some changes of clothes, and a few other small necessities. These things fit in two small bags that they slung across their backs. The bags wouldn't get in the way much while fighting, so it was very ideal. With their ability to cook food and create water, the two of them could survive inside a dungeon indefinitely. They didn't even need pots or pans. Dirk could just form structures of hard stone with his earth magic. If they wanted an oven or pan, he could make it, though it would just be rock. How about now? We have a week to kill 140 skinks and collect their grade 3 fire mana crystals. That's 20 a day. Think we can do it? Dirk glanced at her, the two seeing the fighting spirit in each other's eyes. Ava smiled. I think we can. Then let's go. Saying that, Dirk turned and walked with Ava back to the dungeon. They entered with an unyielding confidence as if there was nothing that could stop them from achieving their goal. Behind. Yup. Splat. Within the dungeon, two people were currently facing off against three skinks. The sun was high in the sky, beaming down with energy-sapping heat. The skinks these two people fought also spat their own flames, attempting to sear their prey alive. Unfortunately, these skinks were not the first these people had killed, and they would be far from the last. The duo passed between the three skinks as they flourished their weapons with coordinated but ruthless swings, mauling the skinks until they couldn't stand. Finally, after only a few minutes, these skinks dropped to the floor, quenching the parched ground beneath them with blood. Dirk bent down to harvest the mana crystals of his kills. After carving through their leathery muscles and bones, he pulled out a warm red mana crystal. As he walked to the other couple of skinks, Ava took a seat on one of the corpses, letting out a breath. How many is that? Eighteen? Nineteen. Dirk corrected her as he plucked the last mana crystal. He then tossed it into the loot bag hanging from his waist. Standing up, he scanned the landscape around them. It had been three days since they entered the dungeon alone. The first two days, Dirk and Ava made their way straight toward the furthest haven. Because they were able to move so fast, they had some time to kill after reaching the haven the group had previously struggled to approach, taking time to hunt some of the strong skinks. After that, they went on to hunt the entire third day, bringing them to now. In this day alone, they had killed and harvested nineteen skinks. Hearing that number, Ava nodded. We need at least thirty crystals a day to make the deadline. That first day, we could only hunt dune worms. That was a waste of time. Well, at least we have this area to ourselves. And nobody weighing us down. Dirk spoke as he looked at Ava. He and she had made a great team. They were fluid in their cooperation with each other. Dirk could hold down multiple skinks and she could chop them into pieces. They made quick work of every enemy they ran into, and they ran into a lot. Neither of them got hurt, and with nobody to worry about, they could focus entirely on the fight. While Ava thought Dirk's words about being held back were harsh to their former partners, she couldn't help but agree. When it was just them, they had no problems. Their efficiency was unbelievably higher than before. Plus, Ava couldn't deny that she liked being alone with Dirk. This was especially so at night. Because Dirk had wanted to pack light and didn't believe in unnecessary accommodations, he had only taken one tent.
This meant that for the past two nights, Ava had slept right by Dirk's side. The two got plenty comfortable, huddling under one blanket and getting cozy in each other's warmth. The only problem that Ava found was that Dirk fell asleep far too fast. As soon as his head hit the pillow, he was out. While he could be awoken with the slightest touch or sound, Ava never bothered him. Still, just their being so close to each other made her giddy. All Ava's problems seemed distant as she hunted inside the dungeon with Dirk. They quickly moved from group to group, killing every skink they saw. With nobody to bother them, they were like ghosts as they drifted around the depths of the dungeon. When one got deep enough, there were truly more skinks than one knew what to do with. Sometimes, the duo would get into back-to-back -back fights, fighting for a dozen minutes at a time. One time, they had fought for an hour straight as skinks continued to pile on top of them. That battle had truly drawn a river of blood, alongside bountiful harvests of course. While individual fights weren't tiring, sequential ones were. The fatigue built up through the hours, and by the end of the day, Ava and Dirk were pushing themselves forward with sheer willpower. After all, they had to use anima and mana to fight these skinks, not just their bodily energy. Using techniques and magic consumed far more energy. But neither complained. If anything, they loved it. It was so much more exciting than training repetitively in the comfort of their home. They could let out their carnal instinct for bloodshed while honing their skill. During these times, Ava couldn't be happier. She was incredibly glad that she and Dirk got over their little spat. Ava appreciated everything she had ever done with Dirk. It was his training and effort that brought her to this point. She couldn't imagine the life she would have led if she had never said yes to him at school. The decision to begin training with him and his mother was the best choice she had ever made. Now, the fruits of her hard work were paying off more than she ever expected it would. All right, let's keep going. After resting for a bit, Dirk began walking off further into the depths of the dungeon. Ava's eyes gazed at his back before she stood and pranced over to him, bumping him with her shoulder. Like that, the two waited for more prey to find them, neither fearful with the support of the one next to them. Meanwhile, as Dirk and Ava fought in the dungeon, Alec was getting settled back into the academy. After arriving at the capital city, Garrett and Kazma went to the academy's hospital to get checked up. After finding that Kazma would be fine, they left and returned to their parents' residences. While Kazma wouldn't be permanently disabled, they needed to ensure that she wouldn't be mentally or physically incapable of progressing far in the future. After all, Kazma's success was the success of the family. Garrett's family interests were also aligned with her success since it was almost settled that they would be getting married in the future. So when Kazma returned to her parents, they were stunned silly. Their daughter's first dungeon dive ended so poorly. After hearing the story though, they didn't know what to say. Kazma had been lethally wounded, but it had been Dirk Strider that saved her life. While Garrett was resentful toward Dirk, Kazma had come to appreciate that heartless teenager. She didn't conceal that it had been his quick thinking that allowed her to be where she was now. If it weren't for his very presence, she would be nothing but food for a bunch of monsters. Such an attitude surprised Garrett. Kazma had been subject to what was essentially torture. She almost bled to death, then her flesh was seared shut. Then she was forced to move a few dozen miles while weak and sick, basically being dragged the whole way. Dirk was the ruthless monster that forced her through that, and Garrett was sure to highlight the pain he put Kazma through. But Kazma shut him down. Sure the experience was beyond dreadful. Kazma would take every measure to never go through something like that again. But after the pain subsided and she looked back, she realized just how lucky she was. Instead of making her feeble, the experience hardened her mind. If she could get through that, then she could get through anything else. She was a bit proud of herself for pushing through everything. Once she healed and got back on her feet, she would be stronger than ever. Kasma's parents also realized how lucky she was. After hearing the story and settling matters, Kasma's father personally paid a visit to the Strider household. It was here that he met Dirk's mother and left her a gift, a thank you for Dirk saving Kasma's life. The gift was two blue crystal shards. There were three levels of currency. 
silver, gold, and crystal. These crystal charts were a unit of crystal currency. And each crystal was worth 1,000 gold coins. Kazma's father had actually paid 2,000 gold for saving Kazma's life. After Dirk's mother got an explanation for everything, she was surprised. After seeing Kazma's father off, she immediately went and found Alec, who told her the entire story. The story shocked Cecilia. It wasn't hard to see what happened, but she didn't know where Dirk could have learned the medical knowledge required to make the judgments he did. After she let Alec go, Cecilia pondered for a while with a frown. After eventually shaking her head, Cecilia disappeared with the decision to just wait until Dirk returned. Splat. Huff, that's thirty. Ava let out a labored breath after burying her axe in the head of a skink. Dirk also swiftly killed off his prey with a knife to its eye socket. There were thirteen bodies around them, and the sun was getting low. For more days had passed. This was now the seventh day that the two had entered the dungeon alone. They never once left. Their food consisted of cooked skink meat which they ate in the morning and night. At first, it had been a bit tough to eat. But over time, the two learned to enjoy it. The only thing Dirk made a mental note of was to bring seasoning on his next trip. Dirk had a faint smile on his face as he plucked out all the mana crystals. In his vision, he could see a counter with the number 142 on it. This was the number of mana crystals they had collected, and the number was tracked by Dirk's AI. They had finally hunted enough. Now, their job was complete. We're done. Dirk spoke, a little excitement in his voice. Hearing him, Ava was also excited. Finally. I didn't think we'd actually do it, by ourselves no less. It's been what, three weeks since we've left home? I've never been gone for so long in my entire life. Hmm. Dirk nodded in agreement. He had spent this entire life within the confines of the capital city, a place of peace, safety, and prosperity. Now, not only had he left, but he had done so for three weeks straight. He had no guide or parent with him. Their livelihoods depended on them alone in this place. While he was perfectly fine with this, for Ava this was a huge adventure. Everything was new and she had to mature a little in order to keep her bearings. Luckily, with Dirk here things became much easier. He was never phased by anything. Well, it looks like we can finally leave. We can start making our way back now. Let's sleep early and leave early in the morning. We can be on a wagon home in two days. Dirk spoke as he hoisted his bag. However, Ava seemed to think of something else. Hey, what if we went to the King's Hall? King's Hall? Hearing her, Dirk was surprised. The King's Hall was basically the boss room for each dungeon. In the lesser dungeons like the one they were in, the most powerful of a species would form a King's Hall. One could fight the king, and if it was killed, then the victors would be awarded precious loot. However, there were two things that caused Dirk to frown. One, the king was an enemy that surpassed all others in a dungeon. Two, once someone entered the king's hall, they couldn't leave until either they or the king died. It was a life or death battle, and worse yet, they couldn't evaluate the power of the king until they entered personally. While it wouldn't outstrip the power level of the dungeon by far, it was still a significant jump. So far, Dirk and Ava had fought skinks that were at the higher end of the rank 3 level. These rank 3 skinks were large, strong, and fast. As for the king, it would most likely be a rank 4 skink. Not only that, but it would likely be able to use tier 3 magic. Dirk was rank 3 himself, and at the peak of rank 3 no less. He could slaughter the skinks they had been fighting all day, even by himself. However, he had never fought a rank 4 enemy before, and over time, Dirk had felt the difference between power levels in this world. The robbers he had killed had rank 2 strength. Despite that, Dirk had slaughtered them like they were nothing. They simply couldn't resist his strength. He could break their bones with his hands. Even back on Earth, no ordinary person could do such a thing. He had already surpassed his self from Earth, in terms of personal strength at least. Dirk was wary about fighting those above him, but at the same time, he wanted a challenge. 
He thought about it for a long while, weighing his odds. Slowly, he nodded. If you're confident, then we'll do it. But this is an all-in battle. You can't be indecisive. Dirk looked at Ava with a solemn face. Once they went in, there would be no coming out unless they succeeded. Just this fact alone worried Dirk. Ava naturally knew what fighting the king meant though. Hearing that he wasn't opposed, Ava was excited. Yes. Dirk, we can do it. Besides, we gotta push ourselves if we wanna get better. These kinds of battles will make us stronger. I guess. We rest first though. Let's head back. Of course. Ava was all smiles as she started walking back to the haven with Dirk. It only took an hour or so to arrive, and as they walked into the haven, they dragged the corpse of a skink with them. Right now, Dirk and Ava were the only ones in this haven. The other group that had been there was now long gone. The duo had the entire fortress to themselves. There weren't even any guards stationed here. Those would only be seen in the havens near the entrance of the dungeon. Dirk and Ava tossed their bags in the center of the open plot of land. Ava quickly got to setting up the tent while Dirk tossed the skink corpse to the side. He then bent down next to a certain rock formation nearby. This rock formation was the oven he had formed the day before. He hadn't gotten rid of it since there were no people here and he knew he would use it again. Dirk lit a fire above his hand. Facing his palm to the oven opening, he used a certain spell and shot his flames into the oven. These flames burn much hotter than ordinary flames, easily reaching thousands of degrees. It wasn't long before the interior of the oven was scorching hot, and with the stone absorbing so much heat, the temperature would linger for a long while. This made it easy to cook without constant flame. After that, Dirk went and cut up the skink corpse. He cut out the thickest cut of meat from the skink around its abdomen and legs. Then, he cut them into strips before tossing them into the oven. The meat sizzled as the heat from the stone rapidly cooked it. Dirk was sure to occasionally heat up the oven with his flames too, keeping the temperature constant. After setting up the tent and making it as homely as it could get, Ava also went over and sat next to Dirk. It wasn't long before he pulled out these strips of meat and put them onto a clean stone plate. They were thoroughly cooked but still tender and juicy. While the taste was bland with no seasoning, they could only make do. The two dug in as Dirk tossed in plenty of meat for the both of them. After about an hour, the two were totally full. H.M., that was pretty good. You've gotten better. Thanks. Mmm. I'll take care of the corpse. Ava smiled at him before suddenly standing up. She walked over to the skink corpse which had been half-gutted before grabbing its tail and dragging it out of the haven. Once she exited, she activated the anima in her body and began swinging around her. After building enough momentum, she let go and flung the skink away. The corpse went flying through the air before landing about 90 meters away with a solid thud. Yes. Ava cheered for herself before walking back in. All monster corpses would disappear naturally with time, so they didn't need to worry about burning trash or anything themselves. They could just toss it out in the open and the dungeon would decompose it itself. All right, be sure to get plenty of sleep tonight. Dirk spoke as Ava trotted back to his side. Wake up whenever you want. We'll only go to the King's Hall when we're totally ready. We're also going to leave most of our auxiliary items here. We'll only bring in our gear to fight with. There can't be any distractions. Other than that, fighting skinks to reach the King's Hall will serve as our warm-up. Don't be nervous, but don't be relaxed. We just need to keep sharp and hope we'll be fine. Dirk laid out his plans. He truly hated how one couldn't enter and exit the King's Hall as they pleased. If they were to enter and immediately find that the skink was beyond their level, then they could only fight to their death. It could be seen as a path of no return. This was something Dirk absolutely despised. But he also wasn't a coward. He had gone through plenty of crisis battles where all seemed hopeless on earth, and he had used his wits in daring to carve a path out. Because of this confidence, he was willing to take the risk. If he wanted to become something great in this world, he had to be willing to do such things. 
Gone were the old rules. Dirk was finally taking a plunge into the deep end of this world. Not only that, but he had someone to fight with, a partner to face adversity alongside. 